In this program, we're going to take a look at three different ways of representing organic molecules. An empirical formula, a molecular formula, and a structural formula. Let's start with the empirical formula. The definition of the empirical formula is given here. The simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. So if I was to look, say, at my example that I have here, um, I would note that there's uh, those represent carbons in the gray. So I've got four times the carbon atom. I've got uh, eight times the white hydrogens and two times the oxygens. So in terms of a simplest ratio, this compound would be C2H4O, the simplest ratio of these atoms. The molecular formula, on the other hand, represents the actual number of elements in each compound. So again, in our case up here, these would be the numbers I would want. C4, H8, O2. Now the empirical formula is obtained experimentally often by, say, something like a carbon analysis that would give us the percentage composition of a compound. And from that, we could then determine the whole number ratio. In order to move from this formula to this formula, we usually need one other piece of information. Data information is typically something like the molar mass. I have an example down here how we could use that. So we have an empirical formula of a compound, CH. Its molar mass, however, is 78. So here's how I might set up to solve this problem. So the total is 78. And that's equal to a carbon, which is 12, and a hydrogen, which is 1, times n. So solving here, 13n is 78 n here would equal 6. That means that the actual molecular formula would be 6 times that, or C6, H6, benzene. Let's look now at the structural formula. A structural formula gives us even more information. It shows us how the atoms are actually bonded to each other. So I'll begin with a full structural formula of this. Again, the black is the carbon connected to three hydrogens. So that might be, say, carbon number one. Now let's move on to carbon number two. It's connected to two hydrogens. Moving on to carbon-3, again connected to two hydrogens. And finally, carbon number 4, this one's connected to a OH combination and doubly bonded to an oxygen. So that would represent a full structural formula. This is quite often what one is asked to draw in an IB exam. A condensed structural formula takes this and puts it in a smaller space. So again, starting at carbon number one, I have three hydrogens attached to it. Moving on to carbon number two, it has two hydrogens attached to it. The next carbon, number three, again, two hydrogens. And the last carbon is connected to an oxygen and an OH combination. So this takes up less space, but conveys the same information. Be very careful, however, when answering questions, whether one's asked for a full or a condensed. Now we'll finish by looking at a skeletal formula. Let me show you the skeletal formula for this. In this particular technique, every vertice here 
represents a carbon. In addition, we don't put on all the hydrogens because they further clutter up the diagram. So we actually have to determine how many hydrogens are present by looking at how many bonds the carbon has. So we essentially have to calculate the hydrogens. At position number one, I have a carbon and I see here that it has made one bond. So I would understand then that there would have to then be three hydrogens present to give carbon four bonds. At position number two, I can see there are two bonds to that carbon. That would then imply that there must be two hydrogens at that location. Similarly, at carbon number three, I see two bonds implying two hydrogens. Finally, at carbon number four, well, it has four bonds, so there's no room for a single hydrogen here. Let's take a look at this in a further example. Here we're going to convert this line diagram into a full structural formula and a condensed structural formula. So let me begin by numbering my carbons. Number one, two, three, four, and five. So let's start with a five carbon chain. Starting at position number one, I see only one bond coming out of here. Hence, there must be at this location three hydrogens. Moving on to carbon number two, I see there's a chlorine attached here. I also see a double bond between carbons two and three. That carbon then has four bonds, room for no others. So it's actually finished. At carbon number three, Again, I see the double bond. This carbon has, this carbon has uh, three bonds, so there's room for a hydrogen, which I'll put here. Carbon number four has two bonds, room for two hydrogens. The final carbon number five is connected to a hydroxyl or an OH group, leaving room for two more hydrogens. So that would represent my full structural formula. Let's take it now and condense it. So CH3 for this carbon. Moving on to the second carbon. That carbon is connected to a chlorine. And that's it till we get to the next carbon, which is connected to a hydrogen. And then our next carbon is connected to two and our final is connected to two hydrogens and an OH group. And this represents the condensed formula. So that's a quick look at three different formulas that you need to be aware of and pay particular attention when you're asked for structural formulas, whether you're asked for condensed, line, or full structural diagrams.